All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's a very special and a very unique time. Comes once in 12 years. What time is it? Yes, you're right. It's the transit of Jupiter in the sign of Pisces. Well, but we have seen so many videos on this topic, right? We have also seen exotic astrology video and so many other videos on the, um, this same topic uh, in different channels. But what everybody misses about this transit is, is it that it's happening once in 12 years? Well, every sign of Jupiter's uh, Jupiter's transit in every sign happens once every 12 years. So what's so special about this transit, right? Because even for Aquarius or Aries, it's going to happen once in 12 years, after 12 years again. So what is that which is uh, very important for this particular transit? Well, you have to understand what Pisces is, right? And you have to understand what Aries is. You also have to understand what is the Gandanta zone, which is the last degrees of Pisces and the initial degrees of the sign of Aries, right? That's the Gandanta zone. It's not a very treacherous uh, Gandanta zone like the one of Scorpio and Sagittarius. That's very treacherous. But nonetheless, it's still a Gandanta zone, right? So, most of the times when planets transit Gandanta sign, uh, Gandanta uh, zones, you know, any one of the three Gandanta zones in the uh, Kundli, then what happens is there is terrible churning which happens, right? Terrible in the sense, not bad, but it can be either good or bad for you. Uh, it can be challenging, it can be easy or it can be uh, empowering, it can be uh, disheartening, right? Depends on how you see it and how you use it, okay? So this transit of Jupiter in the sign of Pisces and these are the last days. So on 22nd of April, 2023, Jupiter will finally move into the sign of Aries, right? And this is as per Vedic sidereal astrology. <clears throat> so, the sign of Pisces is a very evolved sign, right? The sign of Pisces shows the highest level of spiritual perfection. Although, it's very surprising that uh, it's not the Mool Trikon sign of uh, Jupiter, neither is it uh, the exaltation sign of Jupiter, right? Many times people ask me, why is Pisces not the uh, highest level of uh, exaltation sign for Jupiter, right? Why is it Cancer? Why and why, why, why in the universe is it not even a multricorn sign? I mean, is it so bad? <laughs> If it is the highest of all evolved spiritual sciences, then why does Jupiter not get Multricorn or Exaltation? For, forget Exaltation, at least Multricorn in the sign of Pisces. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you want me to make this video then some other time, right? But nonetheless, it's a very evolved sign, right? One of the most evolved signs or sometimes you could say it is the most evolved of all signs. And when you have such an evolved sign, what happens? There, there are there are different entities that come along with the sign of Pisces. You know, one is to be mature, to be free, to give freedom and to like freedom, to understand that which you can't see, to try to see that which you cannot understand, right? <laughs> to see beyond what is seeable, to understand beyond what is understandable, right? To understand the achintya tattva of God, right? So, Lord Krishna, his one of the names is achutya. Achutya means one who never falls down. But he's also achintya. Achintya means inconceivable, right? <laughs> so, these are two words, achutya and achintya. They are perfectly fitting for Lord Krishna here. So, when a person has... Too many planets in Pisces, you know, or especially you know the Sun, Moon, or the Lagna Lord, or the Lagna itself is in Pisces. Then it means that 
the person has spent considerable amount of time uh, in the previous lifetimes uh, doing sadhana and doing spiritual practices and evolving himself uh, to a particular standard actually, right, spiritually. But does that mean just by um, having planets in Pisces, you will um, you are very spiritually elevated? Well, well, not really. It depends on the horoscope also. Because uh, what if you have planets in Pisces, but your ninth lord is not well placed? So that shows you might have done sadhana, but it was not under the proper guidance of a bona fide a guru, a bona fide diksha guru, spiritual master, right? So then there's a fallacy there. Okay, so just because planets are there in Pisces, it doesn't mean that everything is just fine and the person is very spiritual. You can also find many crooks, thugs, murderers also with the sign of Pisces, right? So all Pisces ascendants or all Pisces moon, it doesn't mean that they're very evolved, but it definitely means they have a higher probability, a higher possibility to elevate themselves compared to other people. Now, Jupiter is transiting. These are the last days in the sign of Pisces. So what happens when Jupiter transits? Now, see, Jupiter is the planet which rules Pisces. It's the planet of optimism, hope, spirituality, knowledge, divinity, learning. Uh, not so much application, but uh, learning the way how things are done in, in, in this material world or even, even spiritually, you could say that, right? So Jupiter is now in the last days. Whenever any planet is about to go from Pisces to Aries, what happens is there is something which is ending. Now, which is but natural because there is the Gandanta zone. But you have to understand what is Pisces. Pisces is the last, it's the final evolution. As you know, it's the 12th sign. We know it, but we also have to know that it's the, the end of evolution. So, it's like a ripened fruit which is falling down. Imagine, have you seen a ripened fruit falling down? Hmm. I have seen it very less because I have not stayed much in the villages. I have always stayed in cities. But generally people have seen you know, ripe. Something is very ripe. You know, Imagine a ripe mango and then that falls down. Right. So that is like the situation of a planet when... He moves from Pisces into Aries, right? So what happens is there is either one of the two things, either a plan, either uh, the, the things which the planet represents, they will undergo one of the two things. Either you leave something, which means you renounce it. Why, why do you renounce it? Because you are convinced that you won't get happiness there or through that or your desires are not fulfilled. Either ways you are renouncing it. That's the first probability. All the other probabilities, your desires related to that are fulfilled and now you are looking for the next venture, right? So, whichever houses Jupiter rules in your horoscope, it is highly, highly, highly probable that something new, something very big you are going to start when Jupiter enters Aries. Why? As I said, either... You are fulfilled, you are happy and now you are looking for the next, uh, to go to the next level or you are frustrated, you are, or maybe sometimes even bored of doing the same thing, right? So then what happens is you lack fulfillment. Either you get complete fulfillment or you lack fulfillment. So when this transition happens, there are certain uh, things which you have to give up, right? What do I mean when I say you have to give up? Give up doesn't mean you have to just like, you know, stop doing something. But you have to understand that at, a, at the end of the day, there's nothing in this world or there's nobody who can get anything and everything, right? So there are certain things which you have to give up to get, gain certain certain other things, okay? So, for example, if you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to be very, very, very successful in your profession, then maybe you might have to, you know, skip all the parties which people have, right? If you're just partying, how can you be a successful ent entrepreneur? Now, of course, somebody will say, oh, but does it mean, you know, and entrepreneurs don't party? Well, no, uh, not necessarily uh, that they don't, but 
there are so many people i know who are have their own companies and you know they they are struggling and you know they are just working 18 20 hours a day so that's somewhat abnormal but that grand success in one area of life has to come from some compromises with other areas of life right many times you will see politicians uh, who either have no marriage or you know or they have marriage but it's as good as non existent right uh, i can take a lot of names but doesn't make doesn't make a difference anyways so why because they are they are pumping so much energy into one area of life that the other areas of life they are getting compromised okay so you might also be tempted to do something similar because now you may want to put full focus and all your energies into one area of life right which can be bit detrimental because you have to be able to handle that properly so for example if uh, jupiter is your 7th uh, lord then it is very much probable that something related to the marriage either something new is happening or either it's breaking apart right now of course uh, jupiter 7th lord um, it means you know that you are a virgo lagna for example i mean if suppose pisces uh, is there in the 7th house or even if sagittarius is there so either you are a gemini or virgo lagna but does it mean that now gemini and virgo will be 1/6 of the world population so does it mean that you know um, all 1/6 of the world population uh will actually you know have a divorce or something like that. well not necessarily divorce will only happen if the horoscope indicates but what i'm trying to tell here is that you may be tempted to uh, put all eggs in one basket but as warren buffett says you know that it's not a very intelligent idea to put all eggs in one basket so therefore you also might want to rethink the energies of uh, jupiter in pisces and then Mm, jupiter in the sign of aries okay so therefore uh, it's very crucial that we understand our limitations not only limitations of our body and mind and wealth and finances but also the limitations of our desires because the problem is the desires are uh, unlimited there's no limitation but our um our resources are limited and even if our resources are unlimited our time is still limited right <laughs> and sometimes while fulfilling the desires we get so frustrated that we we'll, we give up the desire altogether right we don't feel like enjoying in the first place right so therefore if you want to pump or if you feel the need to pump 100% in, into two areas of your life why do i say two why not one because jupiter rules two signs right two houses so wherever pisces and sagittarius is from your ascendant those are the two houses where you will want to pump 100% energy and that too with a lot of enthusiasm and optimism right so once you do that then you might have to uh, compromise certain other areas of life but you have to do it very maturely okay because this energy is such an energy that if you do not do it you might remain frustrated and if you do it even then you might be frustrated because you are compromising other areas of life okay so even if you do it for a temporary time please do it cautiously with utmost sincerity without neglecting other areas or other people involved with you in your life okay otherwise uh, this transit can make you more unhappy than happy and if you can handle it maturely if you do things in a proper way by doing justice to other areas of life and at the same time focusing 100% in your these two areas then you will have grand success all right that will be all from my side thank you very much for watching and if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation for me my website is also down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him when jupiter goes into any sign thank you